what age should artists just give up when it comes to their music? I'm gonna show the thoughts. The spicy type. <laughs> from the Cheat Code podcast. Check out this conversation. Shout out to them because it's a dope clip. My wife is damn near 40 and is an aspiring rapper. Not trying to hate on her at all, but she says I don't believe in her because she missed her window because of her age. Is that true or false? If you just love rapping and you want to put music out for your friends and your tribe, then do it. It doesn't yeah. matter your age. But if you're trying to make an income doing this, you have to look at the fact that the fan base, the most people that spend money on music are 13 to 26 years old. So if you're in your 40s, you look like somebody's mom. There is a market for you, but that market is very small. It's a very small niche. There's no way that they're going to tell a 40 year old woman to keep rapping. And I'm sorry to tell you this, bro. I'm not a dream stopper. I am telling you that if you want to start your dream today, then be willing to recommit, itemize. We talked about this on one of our previous episodes, time management. Are you a mom? How many hours of your day are going to be allocated to mom duties? How many hours are going to be allocated to your professional pay my life duties? And then find that amount of time that you're going to have left over that you're going to be able to rededicate your life to getting. Because guess what? Starting 10 years behind somebody isn't insurmountable. It sounds insurmountable. Chances are that person didn't work every single day. And chances are that person didn't put 20 hours in. And if they did, then you're going to be a seven day a week, 20 hour work. I'm going to catch up because you started late. Amen. At the end of the day, do you want it? If so, find a way. I don't know. You want to touch this one first, sir? So I think that there are a lot of different ways to look at this, right? I agree. Yeah. The first thing about, is it possible to do it? Which I think has been proven. Yes. You know, there are artists that pop when they were older. Two Chains comes to mind because I think Two Chains might be one of the more notable people, right? Like 36 or something. Yep. When he popped. Um, Which is crazy. That should be like touched on way more than it is. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. It's like crazy. Yeah. And rap, bro. It's not like, no, not in any other genre, maybe, but rap, bro. Yeah. Yeah. A, a phenom. Um, and then not too long ago, there was those two, I can't think of their name, but it was like these two old white guys that popped on TikTok. They were out. They're like 70, 80. They, they got lit as fuck recently. You know, so. Is there a market for it? Yes. Right. Now, what I think makes it, I won't say impossible, but I will say hard, is a couple of different things. One we already touched on, which is um, the culture of who controls mass market share. Most of market share, especially for rap, controlled by young people. You're talking about teenagers, you're talking about kids, right? you're talking about young adults. Like she was saying, a lot of them just don't want to listen to people that don't look like them and don't represent what they look like. Not a knock against you. You just don't look like me. You like my mom who I'm beefing with right now. So, you know what I'm saying? I can't fuck with you, right? So there's an aspect of it. And the two is I think everything that goes beyond the artistic element of it. Now, you know, I think one of the reasons that we see young artists dominate and win just outside of like the audience is because they have more time to do 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 random shit, right? Yeah. Like I always think about when I was managing the artists I was managing. There was a day where he got booked for a show in Nashville, and you know what I'm saying we probably got that notice like a week in advance. And you know we had a couple of days to get our shit together, and we just up and left and drove to Nashville. Now that motherfucker had a wife and kids, and you know what I'm saying serious bills to pay, and things like that. Could he have done it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying if he had structured his, his his life better or, you know, made certain things happen. But from my understanding, from what I've seen, bro, younger people be willing to just, like, throw it all away at a, for an opportunity. Oh, yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah, you know sure. Like, different energy with shit like that. Like, they'll go and part of it because it ain't much it to throw away. Exactly. They don't have much to <laughs> lose, right? And, like, you're older and you're thinking about that. Like, man, like, I, I don't know if I can afford to take a week off to go to South by Southwest because my kids got to eat, you know, so I got bills to pay, like. My job won't give me the time off. But these are things that like a 17-year-old, 18 or 19 year old are not thinking about. So sometimes a lot of the reasons why I think older artists don't get by is just like that that aspect of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's unavoidable. I'm not knocking them for it. But that is an advantage that younger artists have over you. They don't have as much to lose. They don't have as many things tying them down that force them to make rational decisions all the time. <laughs> Cause we gotta admit, bro, every artist needs at least one good irrational decision that gets, you know get shit going whatever that hey man this A&R in New York told me if I can get in New York he'll play my music for the label I live in Iowa you know what I'm saying it's, it's 
the plane the plane ticket eight hundred. Ain't no opportunity. I don't know if it's opportunity, but fuck it, I'm gonna buy it anyway. Yeah. Like, That's an irrational ass decision, bro. You yeah. break it down, man. He ain't promised me nothing yet. Eight hundred dollars, man. I only make you know what I'm saying twenty five hundred a month. You know what I'm saying it's like it's irrational, right? But younger artists tend to have a lot more leeway to make irrational artists. Um, which then I think just adds to like their excitement factor. So do I think there is space for older artists? Yeah, hundred percent. Because the internet, bro, there are people of all ages and all demographics on the internet. And we talk all the time about if you can make music that people like, that speaks to a particular audience, they will buy it. You know what I'm saying? Assuming it's good, right? And it's like I said, with there being these different pockets everywhere, almost any demographic of music artists can exist today, right? You might not be Drake, yeah, but you can exist. Now, like I said, now do I think a lot of them will be crazy successful? No. It's harder for sure. Much harder. Like if you are in rap, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, rap tends to just be a much more like youthful oriented genre. You know what I'm saying? It's the it's the the genre of rebellion, right? The genre of, of change. Like that's typically represented by older, younger people. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. younger people typically get the face of that. So there are things working against you as an older artist that like you can't even really control. Like that's out of your control. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Well, one, first time I saw this clip, I didn't know that the guy was talking about his wife. I had missed that part. Whatever. Oh, so yeah. the wife said she don't, the wife said he don't believe in her. That makes it a trickier situation. That sucks in the household. You know how that's going. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know Pokey Bear? Pokey Bear? Yeah. I left home to be with my side piece. You never heard that song? I never heard that. It's a great song, song bro. Cook out music. Bro, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it is there, bro. First time I heard it was at a wedding, and it was some messiness going on. I'll say that. I'll tell you the great. Look, look. <laughs> I don't want to get. Let's just say the the side piece was in the building with the current piece, and these are old people that were being messy, like 50, 60 year old. Like the old people, messy. It was, bro, old people, messy, different. Anyway, <laughs> Pokey Bear is like fifty three years old, I think, right now. Fifty somewhere in the fifties. All right, that song isn't that old. He was already old. No matter of fact, he might be older than that. I'm making. I think I saw that on the internet, but I feel like he might be older than that. That song popped like late in his life. Now I know a song you do know. Do you know this person? Bishop Bullwinkle. You recognize that name? Bishop Bullwinkle. Yeah. They're oh. both in the same category. It's a popping genre of old people in the southern region. I know, because I don't know like whole world like that type of you know what I'm saying? Oh man, that's that song. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's that old ho- all right. Nah. It's like do that though. Well, I'll be stroking. Crazy. <laughs> Only those that know. know yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Y'all go check all these out. So this one, you actually notice his his main song. Hell no to the no. Oh, oh, God. No. Oh, Hell no. You yeah. seen that. Yeah. You seen the guy. You yeah. see how old his ass is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yes, you can do the older. If the shit's good enough and it hit in the right way with the right people. Yeah. Because, like, and we know how viral that went. So, yeah, again, you can do it. The chances of you being able to do it, the room for error is lower. Like many things become when you get older, all right? To start, like starting gets harder when you get older or taking certain risks might get harder when you, you get older. But no, I think you can. But I think the bigger conversation that needs to be had is because of today, I, I think it's actually easier to pop older. Yes. All right. 
because of the sentiment of social media, because of the exposure and reach to more people. So you have people like, what was that? Oh, man, I almost remember her name. She was on like Fear, not Fear Factor, America's Got Talent or Britain's Got Talent. And it was an old white lady. She probably had to be 60 or 70 or something. And she sang, I think it was more opera type style, but she was on America's Got Talent and became this phenomenon, Elizabeth maybe or something. I don't know. But like that was when I was probably in, I don't know, high school or something. So it's it's still happening. But the thing is, you can pop in different ways, too. So maybe you are, are rapping as mom and then you build brand deals as the rapping as mom. You're not doing a traditional label type of job. Right. But you might still be rapping and building a fan base and be making yourself a content creator that you can monetize. Right. So you're not something in terms of traditional music that can be invested in, but you're a hell of a small business. Right. You ever see a, a, an investor say, or maybe on, on a show like Shark Tank, where they're like, ah, it's a great business for you. It's just not a business I can invest in. Right. There'll be a lot of people today, no matter how old you are, you can musically create something that's good for you, making hundreds of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on the side, maybe even a million plus just for you, even though you popped in your 50s or whatever, you just got to keep putting the content out. And of course, you know, good is relative, but it got to hit. Yeah. Right. It has to connect. Got to. So I think the idea of older people not being able to win Yes, it's more difficult, but I think it's more a traditional mindset and way of looking at it. And if you're willing to not look for the traditional career where I have to go through the same fucking heat of challenges the regular artist is going through today, I want to get all my streams up. I want to be able to be on these same pages for IGPR and influencer spaces and award shows. If you're not playing that traditional game, then you'll be good. But if you want to play that game... I uh, like everything that just got said. Yeah, yeah. Or take a nap. Yeah, yeah sir, take a nap, bro. <laughs> you oh, you can use it, right? <laughs> you probably get <goes> canceled. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> cancel culture. You know, fuck it. We <laughs> feeling like a countdown, man. It's like there's a timer somewhere of cancelativity, and you just watching <laughs> every day. You make it safe. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my god, one more day that I'm okay. It's like. Hey, bro, that's a good <laughs> skit, man. You make it home, yeah, didn't get canceled. Made it home safe. <laughs> 24 hours out, didn't get canceled. Great day. Hey, bro, that, that's definitely a an accomplishment in today's age, bro. Well, check this out, because this has to be the 50th time we had a 50-cent clip. Yeah. He is definitely our most referenced person through clips in the podcast by far at yeah, this he, point, right? Yeah. I, he was every every other every, every other episode at the beginning. I don't know where this clip is from. Just watch it, and then we'll comment, uh, or just listen if you're in a car. Now back. If you take a close look at guys like Jaru, you see that they walk with a crutch. In his case, it was the image of a gangster. He took DMX's flow, dressed up like Tupac, and tried to rap about other people's lifestyles. It worked for a second. But as I said, when you're walking with a crutch, there's a limit on how far you can go. Ja grew up as a Jehovah's Witness on the better side of Queens than I did. The only time he came to my part of town is when he would knock on the door and try to sell copies of the Watchtower. A nice religious boy. There's nothing wrong with that. But the people around him, like her, tried to turn him against his true nature as a gentle guy and transform him into a gangster instead of accepting his blessings. His talent for fun, female-oriented music, they were hell-bent on turning him into something negative. When they got a record deal with Def Jam, what did they call it? Murder Inc. Records. They had an open road in front of them, but they decided to paint themselves into a dangerous corner. Since none of them were actual murderers, they started seeking out people who had that energy. They eventually found what they were looking for, and it almost brought the whole company down. That's what ruined Ja Rule's career. 